Tow Tussie doesn't sound like shit because it doesn't <laughs> Tow Tussie, isn't that on their face, though? Yes. Or that's, that, that's that Tow Tussie. It brings a new meaning to skull fuck. You don't yeah. lose your virginity if you nose fuck people. Bro, you know what? I never really realized that until you said it. Now, you could literally skull fuck a towel. A towel. Yeah. No, so it's more like an end and not like an opening. But I mean, and maybe if you take enough Viagra, you sort of like batter down the gates. That that might be an option. <laughs> like I said, if you saw that, if you ever saw that episode of fucking Family Guy, if, as long as it's if it's in the ear or the nose, it doesn't count. <laughs> I mean, this is true. It technically doesn't count. I, as I feel like if, if you're if you're uh, if your dick's small enough where you can fuck somebody in the ear or the nose, it, it brings up a separate issue. Step bro, do Tau canonically have dicks? How do other Tau come to be? Um, this is true. Well, when a daddy Tau and a mommy Tau love each other very much, uh, Games Workshop reminds us of no woman in Warhammer, and we continue on. No. So, wow. It's- <laughs> <laughs> you are now listening to Heresy FM. This ain't your commissar station. Welcome to the Serpent's Lodge, everybody. This is your boy Corn Berserker. We're here with the Groot and Step Bro. What's yeah. up? Got a little, uh, got a little sidetrack there because you know, again, these are the kind of things we talk about before we go on air. So we decided, fuck random it. Random bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Like Tao fucking. Tell and then, Tau getting and then we jump from that to Brock Lesnar's <laughs> daughter, and then, <laughs> and then somehow, t- somehow Tau Tussie becomes fucking yeah. Groot was a WWE wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ADHD. <laughs> so, uh, uh, how how uh, how far do you think? I'm sorry, I know we did get on the episode, but at the same time, like, how much do you think? How well could an orc do in WWE? Oh, bro, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, but like, it would either be like really win. good, or they do so good it'd be bad. You bring because an orc into the WWE, else. it's the Attitude Era all over again. There would be uh, there would be no other wrestlers. Yeah, yeah so sure, I mean, yeah. he'd he'd hold every championship. Fucking Stone Cold Orc Oxen, Austin Orkston, Orkston, Orkston. <laughs> you gonna throw the cockney action in? Hey boy. <laughs> all right. So, anyways, speaking episode, of Zenos today, we have uh, yes, we have we've gone through the Imperium and the Humies. Uh, yep. we, yep, we've gone, uh, we've gone through all of chaos Yep. and there's only one group left yep. and that would be the Xenos. Yeah. Uh, like we said from last episode, this is everything not covered in the previous episodes. Uh, really, if, if you're not a human <laughs> these and you're are not others. a demon, you're one of these guys. Everything else. You fall into the in between. <clears throat> yep. And uh with that, uh God, this is gonna be such a long episode. It will be. Um let me go and if you guys don't mind, let me go and set the scene real quick, I guess you could say, <laughs> just for um just for like the Xenos episode, because there's something that's kind of important to understand that is kind of hard to, okay. Uh take for a second and look at Star Wars, okay? Now, in Star Wars, how many, like, alien species are there? Yes. Uh, Star Wars? Star yes. Wars, yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, you get... I couldn't even... Yeah, yeah there's a lot. I, could, yeah, I, a lot. I don't really even know that. Now, that thousands said, upon you, half thousands of upon... Like, yeah. I mean, they had a whole federation of different aliens. Exactly, yeah. Now, do you get that same feeling when you think about Xenos or aliens in Warhammer? Yeah, yeah I can but see the that. thing is, in 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 Warhammer, there's really only what seven or eight well, types yeah, of Xenos. Well, well, the well, entire thing is that's what I'm. That's playable. Uh, like exactly. these are things uh, like okay, fair enough. You're talking consider, about lore wise, how many are actually, like? Let's say you're yeah. let's say you're a space marine and you land on a planet and you you get there and it's got some humans that live over in this civilization over here but then it has these weird kind of sentient kind of other things over here along with this entire ecosystem of shit that uh isn't like normal <coughs> fauna <coughs> yeah so who were uh the interact I- interacts interacts so that yeah. was that, yeah, that's yeah that's very similar to uh talking yeah. about like a federation of Different species, right? right? So you got the interacts. You also have the crew, which are with fucking Tau. Uh, yeah. You, well, the the Arishan technocracy had some Xenos. I'm not, I'm not 
mistaken in there, but I can't remember exactly what the fuck mm -hmm. they were. Yeah. I mean, um, you, ha you have so a lot yeah. of different examples of... Oh, the fucking murder bugs on Planet Murder. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the yeah there, there's all kinds yeah. of different examples of Xenos. Uh, mainly what we're going over today, kind of, is like your playable Xenos. Uh yeah, the, these are your, these are these are the main factions that have absolutely that have become a threat. So before we go what into is, that, I want to show both of picture? you this. This is a collage in the Xeno section from I want to say the Ninth Edition Codex, and this shows a whole bunch of different alien species that are not playable at all. And my favorite guy, is that mushroom guy, right, the right there. Mushroom. Look at that. And I'll put this up on screen for the viewers as well. Oh, that's a mushroom fucking... with guns. Yes, that's it cool. is. Yeah. Go <laughs> Why take a look at that. I play that. I know. That's what I want to say. Like, you're telling me we're, we got three different flavors of Eldar and we don't have, you know. Bro, what the hell guns. is that? Yeah, just scroll through all those images real quick and take a look at them. I want mushroom men. Yeah. So it's very easy to go and think uh, in 40K in terms of the active players in the universe, so to say. But that being said, Dude, I Isn't love the it? ones in the bottom left here. Oh, yeah, yeah, The The weird, spiky fucking, like... The, the, the orb guys, or was that? Uh, this guy right there. Oh, yeah, with the machine gun, yeah. Yeah, with the machine gun. Yeah, I don't scary. know what the hell that is, but that dude is awesome. So we it need to really have cool. that as a race in, in 40K. Oh, yeah. But um, it's very easy to forget that. This is an entire galaxy, right? <clears throat> when we're this is about what alien. happens when fucking Sam Fisher from <laughs> <laughs> Sam Fisher takes bath salts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Sam Fisher nightmare fuel. But yeah, we'll be covering the main playable factions uh, for all the Xenos on the tabletop and also the, the major players, so to say, right? Because uh, the little mushroom guy with the gun there, he hasn't made any lore impact, I'm sorry to say. At nah, bro, I want yet. this fucking top guy here. This guy, uh, the fucking Iron Warrior. Yeah, with, the square mask Yeah, the fucking, guy. Yeah. basically a dreadnought with skulls all over yeah. it. Yeah. I was say, we can talk about how horrifying chaos is, but the truth is, uh, even without the Immaterium, the material universe is just as horrifying with what they can throw their way. The Space Marines were not made to combat chaos, they are made to combat aliens. So, anyways, where to begin? Going, in order to... In order to talk about our first one, we have to go way, way, way back to, like, before the beginning. <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away. In a, in a universe far, far away. So, uh, we're talking about the Necrons, uh, but oh, before the Necrons, they were known as the Necron tier. They weren't always, you know, looking like Egyptian Terminator robots. <laughs> And in my opinion, these guys do Egyptian better than Thousand Suns. But yeah. also, you know, just to go on my little, uh, yeah. just to go on my little rant here. Fuck the Thousand Suns. Russ did nothing wrong. Oh, Prospero <laughs> was an act of self defense. Don't make me get the sticker out again. <laughs> Your face has already been covered for one episode. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny, like, can yeah. it be a different sticker? I didn't like that space. I, I already, I already printed that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, I mean, you're right. R Russ did nothing wrong. Exactly. He was See? doing what he thought was right now if you would just Horace agree with me step bro <laughs> i've already got one contributed to the cause i mean however on the grand scheme of things oh, russ God. russ kind of fucked up because ah, he, da, pushed, da, 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 da. he pushed fuck. magnus into the arms of zinch I feel like he was zinch already in the arms, in the arms of zinch mm. like yes and no but yeah, yeah I, I just broke his back and Russ just broke his back into you the know, arms of Zinch. Maybe maybe that's what we could do for the side episode as we talk about quote unquote hot topics. Yeah. Yeah. Or like what could have happened had, you know, Russ not been a dick to Magnus. Oh, that Russ if we was do a what not if episode, we're gonna be up to till like five AM. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look, Russ was the brother that just gave Magnus the tough love that he fucking needed. He broke his back. <laughs> I mean, he broke his back and then this damn near destroyed the entire home. That world. was that, that yeah. was different. <laughs> it's he always was, different with he, you guys. He was told genocide is different when I do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He was just oh, it's following not magic. Orders. I think a mustache man yeah. said that. <laughs> it's not sorcery. It's magic. Yes. So, uh, so before the Necrons were these, you know, Terminator Egyptian robots, uh, they actually had skin. They were skin and bones, and uh, but the shitty part about that with them having skin and bones was they lived on a planet that was way too close to the sun, and so they developed horrible cancers that caused them to have like a 20-year lifespan. They looked Man. like gray wrinkled ball sacks. Who would have thought that, you know, living three miles from the sun would give you skin cancer? That's crazy. Yeah. It's a surprise. Yeah, it's, 
So, uh, bro, not gonna lie, the entire Necron story is super <laughs> fucking sad. So, uh, that's how I'm fucking laughing about it. I, I enjoy how this is like the, one of the worst stories. Like, obviously, we haven't had like a book series in uh, this time period or anything else like that, but also this is a horrifying event and this happened 60 million years before yeah essentially now and 40k because the in the span in the span of time basically 40,000 years makes no difference when you talk about 60 million so the story yeah. of the necrons Shit. is quite literally the story of bad fucking decisions yep yeah so uh I feel like almost every story that we've hit on so far when it comes to a certain thing it's just bad decisions I'm yeah, not saying yeah. theme pretty much Magnus, <laughs> I see a reoccurring theme here yeah Horus. So yeah, they <laughs> were Magnus for <laughs> fucking around and finding out. Erebus, yeah. Lorgar, Erebus again. Yeah. Lor- Lorgar big time. And Lorgar, Lorgar again. big time. <laughs> Magnus again for breaking dad's webway portal. Magnus for dipping his toes into the. the okay, into you're, the you're the Xenos guy, please. Let's stop dragging this out. He's down. already dead. <laughs> so, uh. Of so these guys were at the point where their where their tombs were actually like overshadowing their cities by like a long shot, um, and it like it was super. You know, you got to think because not only do you have to teach, you have twenty years to teach the generation everything that you know, and then try to advance as much as you can in that twenty years, um, which. As you can imagine, you don't get very far very fast. No, it was very much a society ruled by death. Um, if you actually want a really great and interesting look into this, uh, please read, first of all, Infinite and the Divine covers this a tiny bit. Not much, though. Uh, and also the Twice Dead King series. That is a fantastic Necron book. Um, honestly, anything, any book written about Necrons is probably going to be one of your top ten. It's fantastic. But it was a society ruled absolutely by death. By the age of five, they had five years of grace period. And that's whenever they're uh, growing up as the Necron tier. Okay. After that, that's whenever the stuff started happening. That's whenever they started showing signs of uh, cancer and everything else. And most of the serfs, because reminder, this is based off like ancient Egypt. So you basically had sort of caste system going on. Uh, the young, the plebeians, so to say, you know, those guys. Fucking plebs. Yeah, fucking plebs. I mean, you're looking at like 10 to 12 years. And if you're like a royal noble, you got access to the medicine, you got entire people whose entire lives about taking care of yours, you may live to like up to like 18. And if you're really ancient, maybe 20. So you had to get stuff done fast. You know, one thing they never thought of, because, you know, that would be the smart thing to do. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. <laughs> I mean, that's part two. What I'm saying SPS is you live that close billion. to the sun and you walk outside and immediately get like stage 40 skin cancer. Shade from the sun. What, yeah. Wouldn't it be smart to maybe start taking your civilization underground? Now, here's the entire deal with that is that apparently uh, whenever the civiliza- uh, civilization was basically developing into an actual society, culture, everything else, uh, it was so far gone uh, to the point where basically it was ingrained in their DNA to basically start decomposing. Now, the actual science, yeah, I'm not joking. That's the actual DW Lord. It's like, oh, I'm 13. I've there's got 14 hours to live. Pretty yeah, much. That, bro, that's <laughs> quite honestly what it was. Yeah, their society God, was terrible. so fucked that it was straight up genetic at that point. I mean, even after they invented sunscreen somehow, <laughs> uh, it was still at a case of no matter what they did, their species as a whole was doomed. How long did this take, you said? Um, when it, at, from the start of their civilization. So whatever, like the evolutionary period or whatever they did so before. so essentially as far from as the I know, start as far as i know there's no like actual i mean there's you're talking about before you're talking about recorded necron tier history and no that i mean i i understand anymore, but what i'm saying like even from the start of the whole <laughs> from the get-go those guys walked out and like man it's hot all right well i guess we'll start a city then and it's like bro just become like mole people and just Live you underground. Would, well, you would think, and then they send decide, your people who you are about think, to die up to the surface and let them die that way. Ironically, they decided that the opposite would be the best option, <laughs> and so they decided that getting off the planet would be the better option. I mean, you're right; it would be. However, they could have done all that underground and then 
pulled some like Judge Dredd shit and just who, anybody who's about to die, go send them out to the cursed earth. No, nah, bro. All I can imagine is they, bi- they basically built like big metal balls and they're just basically fucking catapulting this bitch <laughs> off the fucking planet. <laughs> not worth watching. And just hoping for the best. Uh, but eventually they did do it. Uh, they did, they successfully got off planet and uh, they made contact with these big ass fucking toad looking monsters uh, called the great old ones. They were they were ecstatic by the way. They just met like a sentient alien species and they're saying, "Oh my goodness, hey, this is amazing!" And also, they yeah, had some more old ones. Yeah. Uh, so as so you know if. If you're a guy who has a lifespan of, you know, like 20 years or whatever, and you're meeting a guy who can obviously live any kind of amount longer than that, you've basically, yeah. in your mind, seen God. And uh, so these guys were like, oh, you know, you guys are, you guys must live forever. You know, you could, you could teach us these things, which they were the great old ones. So, you know, they had this power. Which, by the way, they were the, the great old ones were the first sentient species in the galaxy. As far as anybody's aware, they were the very first. And they were alone by themselves before any other species for like millions and millions of years, being like a, basically a space-faring civilization. They had already like maxed out life before any other civilization came on the scene. Yeah, they uh, they were just flying around like it was nobody's business. They were just kind of, <laughs> turned out, I, I think it had turned out that they had just kind of been sitting there watching the Necron tier. Just... Yeah. <laughs> and you know what the best part of those guys are? They are the same thing as some of the current politicians we have. Fucking lizard people. They are. They were lizards. So were you want to know, know the funniest thing about that? So uh, last episode we mentioned how the... Mark Zuckerberg's a lizard. <laughs> yeah, very Changed true. my mind. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is an agreed old one. Changed my mind. <laughs> put a, put a, like a cricket in front of him, see what happens. But um, the funniest thing is that actually we don't have any real descriptions from 40K, except from like one or two. And they are, in the grand scheme of things, relatively recent within like the last decade, essentially. Okay. Mm. The reason we know what the great old ones look like is because of Warhammer Fantasy. It's because yeah. what happened is basically... The Great Old Ones were also present in Warhammer Fantasy. So that's another connection between the fantasy we're, AOS universe. And were 14. they the Saurians? Uh, well, not necessarily. It's sort of, yeah. Like this. What they did is they went to the fantasy the world. Slan. Yeah, yeah, and they made the Lizardmen, and, but also they made the Slans, and the Slans mm-hmm. supposedly looked very similar to the Great Old Ones. Bro, if they didn't yeah. know that hmm. this was a 40K podcast or like a Warhammer podcast, bro, they would think we were Alex Jones in right now. <laughs> The lizard people are in control of the universe. You know what? They don't want you to know There's this. chemicals in the Imperium yes. that are turning the frogs gay. Yes. <laughs> well, you know what? Technically, when we were talking about 40K, this basically is a giant Alex Jones freaking cons- like conspiracy theory podcast type of thing. Alex really Jones, is. sanest person in 40K. Yeah, he Biggie really Jones. is, honestly. Biggie Jones. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he can predict things millennia before they happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> there's water in the pyramid that turned into Dark Angels guy. I don't know. No, it's just the Dark Angels. <laughs> it's just the Dark Angels. Just give it time. We will hey, give it time. A couple episodes, we get to talk about the gay Dark Angels. Oh, I'm going to unload on that episode. Not, not because not because the gay thing. Not because the gay thing. Because of the common community misunderstanding. Wait. Go on from there. Do you mean the Dark Angels? Dark the Dark Angels. Angels. <laughs> Anyways, continue on with the old so, ones. Uh, so... So uh, these guys, they were like, oh, you know, you guys are gods. You, you sh- surely you can give us the powers of immortality. We are but we are but poor, lonely people, and we only live for short amounts of time. Please help us. And fucking, they fucking pulled a Pepe and kick. No. <laughs> well, now, just <laughs> laughing Pepe. And no. uh, <laughs> they said, fuck that. No, nah, you can't have it. And they were like, oh, by the way, get the fuck off my ship. And they booted them bitches back to the planet surface. Mm-hmm. So uh, as as any lowly species does when God forsakes them, they say, fuck that. We're going to forsake their shit out of God. And they they declared, they they put it in their, they ingrained it in their being that they would stop at nothing to destroy the great old ones. If I can't live past 20 years, nobody can. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not entirely sure on what all happens after that. Ooh, I know that... Oh, I got this part. Oh, here so, you go. Oh, yeah. So, the entire reason, which is also partially why I mentioned why the Great Old Ones were sort of like peak civilization, so to say. Uh, you can take that 
actual statement with a grain of salt. But, you know, they were they were up there in terms of like uh, psychologically, sense of self, technologically, uh, connection with the warp, which at that time was just the Sea of Souls. There's a difference, technically. Uh, but when they looked at the Necrons... Wait, the what? Technically, the warp used to be called the Sea of Souls, and to a degree it still is in 30K, 40K, yada, yada. But there's some semantics about why different names are more applicable back then versus right now in 40K. And we'll get into that in a little bit. That's actually going to come like after, between Necrons and the next species we go into. But the Necrons uh, were also very selfish. <clears throat> so say, from all reports that we've heard about, from the Necrons themselves, basically mean basically is telling us that the Necrons went up to the old ones. They didn't like politely ask for old age. They expected it. And they were quite frankly kind of kind of dicks. Or at the very least, they gave off sort of like some bad juju evil aura. And the great old ones saw that and they're like, if we give you immortality, <clears throat> we're scared of what you're going to do with it. You're you're basically a little kid species, and you're asking for the key to a mortal life. Yeah. We don't like that. Well, given the fact that their entire civilization was built to was Die. basically <laughs> built in advance of the deaths, it's like, hey, cool. Uh, you're what nine? Hey, yeah. go help them build this fucking tomb over here because we've got about six million people who are about to die in the next week. So, yeah. uh, like, that's their entire... That's some shit. Can you imagine that? Like, your whole purpose in life is just to yeah. build graveyards and tombs for the people who are about to die so that way your little brother can do the same for you in a couple of years. Like, you'll have that on <clears> the <throat> big jobs. You'll have that on those fucked up jobs. There's so many dead people that just had to, like, start cremating them, put them in, like, little Kroger coffee cans, stuff like that. <laughs> Corpse you, starch. You go, yeah, corpse starch. <laughs> but, um, Bro, could you imagine the shelves of fucking coffee cans? <laughs> the houses are made out of coffee cans. The coffee cans are people. <laughs> so but it's so interesting. Coffee. Reminder, the, the Necron tier, and reminder, the differentiation is Necron tier is when they're still uh, mortal, so to say, and Mr. Necron is There's been a second. <laughs> there's been a second Keurig. There's been a second Keurig. But... Reminder, this was a very, like, uh, socially stratified uh, class structure. And the people who were talking to the old ones were high up diplomats, basically quasi nobles, probably. Uh, we don't have any official confirmation on this. But that being said, whenever they got, and they asked for help with their predicament, right? So presumably, it sort of implied they asked for immortality, not just a better lifespan. Uh, but that's sort of guesswork. But also, who, odds are, I mean, this is, again, drifting into assumption, but this is kind of a safe bet. When they received the key to that, <clears throat> and the nobles got uh, basically cured of the skin cancer, everything else, who do you think, when they got the technology to do that, who do you think they would have cured? That they would have cured a homeless gym on the street? No, they would have cured the nobles and everybody important to them to secure who they are. Oh, of course. you yeah. got to keep the power where exactly, it is. Exactly, yeah. And that goes back into why the old ones denied it, because they said, you're not ready for this. Your civilization is not ready for this. But long story short, the Necrons are like, huh, yeah, we don't like God, like you were saying. Uh, so they took their puny little war sh uh, warships and they're like, we're an intergalactic civilization now. We we hold, like, all this territory. And it was a sizable amount of territory. It, I want to say it was like a quarter of the galaxy, or it was, it was a very large amount. Uh, and the Great Old Ones relatively had very, very few planets and everything else and they attacked the great old ones and the great old ones proceeded to give them the most thorough ass beating of their lives to the point where the, the entire necron tier species was pushed back to their homeworld the entire like quarter of the galaxy they controlled gone dead the old gone ones? pushed back yeah. just to the planet one planet so I that, thought the old ones were completely fucking eradicated or at least for the most part Fucking some fled, but I thought they were mostly just murdered off. I mean, uh, the old ones are murdered off after this, but this is basically uh, the first. Oh wait, the we're first getting war. there. Yeah, I was saying this is actually oh, the I'm first Necron tier old one war. The one after this is the war in heaven. This is when gotcha. Necrons still have skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that being said, <clears throat> the Necrons didn't want to finish them off because you know all nice Nirvana species saying, "Well, they're kind of dicks, but maybe they'll." improve eventually. Maybe, maybe this will be the hard <laughs> lesson they needed to learn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so they did like the Batman thing where instead of like putting them on death row, they just chucked them in prison and said, we'll rehabilitate you or you'll rehabilitate yourself hopefully soon. So yeah. the great old ones do it and everybody's fine, but Russ does it to Magnus. And oh God, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Necrons here, and an important thing to note is their entire civilization, civilization again was pointed towards death. 
And they've come to realize, even in like ancient mysticism of the Necron tier, they worship the god because the sun was relentless and that's what gave them cancer. They then for so for so, they got rid of those like religious ideas and then they rediscovered it by understanding that it was a son of their homeworld that gave them the cancer. So mm. all the ziggurats, everything else, like the Egyptian style stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> they were God damn it. But they were <laughs> uh, century man. They were all pointing up because it was almost in their culture to worship the sun. And that's why their architecture is very Egyptian-esque. It's all pointing towards the sky, the sun. Uh, but that being said, they looked back at the sun and they saw it moving. And then using the power of science and everything else, because nothing develops technology quite like war, they found that there was actually something around their sun. And they found something that would later be called a Catan, a cosmic entity that was slowly devouring their sun over hundreds of thousands of years, okay? And long story short, we don't know the full detail. They ended up establishing communication with this Catan. And they made an actual, <clears throat> and they actually, well, not yet. They established communication. The Catan's like, hey, buddies. Oh, I, I've never had somebody talk to me before. This is pretty cool. <laughs> and they learned it was actually a sentient species. And the Catan started to go ahead and say, hey, why don't I call my other Catan buddies and we'll help you out with your great old one situation. So they do that and they instruct the, uh, <clears throat> because despite being like giant clouds of gas eating their sun, they were incredibly intelligent. They were almost almost as old as the old ones. Uh, and they hey, just Severo, lived life in a different way. What was the name of this Catan? He was the Deceiver. Because that's a name you can trust. Yes. Now, to be fair, it wasn't named the Deceiver until after, but that's that's fair. But then he also gave uh, the instructions for the Necron, Necron tier to basically build actual bodies for the Catan so they can basically walk among them uh, sort of deal. And these Catan actually became essentially like living walking gods. And they instructed the Necrons on how to be the old ones. And to do that, it was biotransference. And they promised, hey, the old ones would not give you eternal life. We will. So they went on ahead and told them to construct these giant factories. And they ended up rounding up all the civilization. Weren't and they called like them. soul forges or something? Yeah, it was like it was something like that. It was called like soul forges, soul forges, anything else. Um, excuse me. The actual process was called biotransference, and when they came out, they were in these nice, shiny new metal bodies. Not just metal, living metal. Yes, living metal. And that being said, but during this process, something that was not told to them and why the deceiver was given his name is the Catan feasted on their souls as whatever small amount remained was put into these new bodies. So there you go. That's where the Seeper God's name. And now the newly forged Necron, not Necron tier, uh, went ahead with their Catan uh, at their lead and basically ass whooped the great old ones. Like absolutely just pushing them back. And the old ones started losing planets, which they didn't have a lot of to begin with. Okay. And that's whenever the Catan, or sorry, the uh, old ones decided, hey, we need some allies. And they actually made a few different species, two of which we recognize to this day, which would be the Eldar and the Quark. And they were basically the foot soldiers for the great old ones in fighting against the Necrons. Now, that being said, uh, it's the Quarks, not the Orcs, and we'll get more into that later. But long story short, uh, it ended up to where technically the Necrons won. And at the end of the day, the old ones were basically entirely wiped out, uh, essentially to a man. I think there might have been like one or two still uh, left alive, but that was about it. Okay, and after that, then came in the process of the Necrons <clears throat> were no longer at war, and the nobles started talking, hey, it was kind of a dick move what the Deceiver did to us, right? So therefore, a plan was hatched by the Silent King. I gotta be honest, I blank on his full name right now. Zarek? Yeah, Zarek, thank you. Yeah, because he was, he was the one who stopped the, uh, the war of secession. He got everybody together and was like, look, we need to figure out how to fuck these old ones up. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, you can still play as him today. That's true, yeah. Still around. And as many years don't cause <laughs> chain explosions <laughs> and, shit and wipe out half the fucking unit. Small press to pay for fashion. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, Zarek, who single-handedly held this entire civilization together. A reminder, at, at that point, he was still, the first war lasted under 20 years. Yeah. But that's how thoroughly they got their ass kicked. Uh, he was still alive for a biotransference, and he retained the title of king. Long story short, the higher up you were in terms of nobility, 
uh, the more of your soul was left and more of your personality was left in your new Necron body. The plebeians, basically automatons. Like, essentially nothing there. Long story short, he hatched a plan and it was carried out, and they ended up essentially killing the old ones, but the old ones were so powerful they could not be fully killed, so they were shattered and captured into different shards, which were then used by the Necrons as basically a power source. Or you talking about the Catan them. or the old ones? The Catan. Yeah. The old ones were already basically wiped out at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because you said the old ones. That's oh, my, yeah, like, my bad, yeah, my bad, my bad. Yeah, the Catans got fucking shattered into shards and split among, you know, everything. Kind of like Dragon Balls. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Dragon Balls, Pokemon, all the fun yeah. stuff. So there's that. Now, after this entire war, the ne- the galaxy was beyond in flames. It was devastated, okay? But that being said, so even though the Necrons were left as the only really powerful sentient, you know, uh, species in the galaxy, they said the universe is so fucked up right now. We're not going to rule over a kingdom of dirt. We're going to go sleep for 60 million years and give the universe, the galaxy itself, time to heal. And whenever we wake up, we'll take back over the galaxy and reclaim what is ours. And that is the story of the Necron tier, Necrons. Yeah. Definitely the long and short of it. If you want to know more about Necrons, definitely look up a lot of the lore. Yeah, uh, that was the summary, and that probably took like a decent bit of time. That felt like yeah. a decent bit of time. Yeah. And, and, and that summary is essentially just a synopsis because yeah. there is a hell of a lot. Necrons, is about, uh, Necrons also, <clears throat> other than, you know, orcs, is also like one of the few places in 40K lore where you can actually find comedy. <laughs> Yeah, we Believe go, it yeah. or not, like, yeah. and it's, I don't know, some of it's, like, very dark comedy, because obviously you have a, you know, soulless, mindless robot that... Yeah, and I, I think, like, as we go <clears> further <throat> on, we'll, we'll count this as, like, in tr- War in Heaven type time frame, right? We got yeah. most of the Necrons, and we'll touch back on them, we'll get back to them when we advance yeah. chronologically towards the 31st millennium, but... Because the Eldar are actually still around. We're, we're around it during this time, weren't they? Yeah, 100%. So at that yeah. point, uh, the Great Old Ones were gone. But that these their full, uh, foot soldiers were still left alive, mainly yeah. because they made something called the Webway, yeah. as you may know. Uh, and that's mainly where the Eldar resided. And they were able to hide for the Necrons in there. Yeah. That being said, the Krorks, who basically were orcs, but they were hyper-intelligent, they were fully armored. Uh, you could think like a very intelligent orc in a space marine battle suit that was stronger than anything else stronger yeah. than ceramite more uh, i think some uh, like it was reported that some some imperial had seen it because trazen mm-hmm. who is uh, a fucking good old who is a necron who could have his own episode mm-hmm. um <laughs> he actually has a crook uh still preserved in his big gallery that he has and uh th- but there was some imperial or something that had been in Trazen's gallery and made the report that he had seen the Krork. And they said that it was, uh, it had technology that was beyond anything seen in the galaxy today. Its armor was more advanced. It was bigger than, uh, it's bigger than a fucking, a Primarch. Yeah. Yeah, Let it be known that this uh, 60 million years ago is probably when we saw the like galactic peak in technology. Like even at the height of the Eldar, height of the, uh, height of mankind, height of the Imperium, Nothing, nothing, at least to our knowledge, has been close. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still been very, very good and effective, but not nearly as close to the entire galaxy-ending weapons used back then. And it's funny, because it could be that way if the Imperium wasn't so anti-Xenos about fucking everything, including technology. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, I feel like the simplest... Next step to go is going to be with the Krorks, as we're, we've been talking about, because uh, 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 they have a very uh, simple evolution or de-evolution into the Orcs. Uh, uh, tell me how a scary Krork turns into a fucking nine-foot-tall cockney accented <laughs> fucking retard. <laughs> well, you see, did they well, already see have here. the accent? Uh, the accent is technically canon. Yeah, the, Obviously, the accent's canonic but, on, on the Krorks. Well, no, the, probably not we don't, I, don't, saying, I don't think anybody knows what a croak sounds like. Probably proper British, you know. Yeah. There is yeah, the pinky you know. fingers in the air when drinking the tea. Pip, pip, cheerio. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy ho, lads. The croaks are, walking, the the croaks are rocking the, walking around sounding like the royal family and shit. <laughs> I say good sir. I want to see croaks in like a powdered wig wearing like a red coat. Oh, they're just foppish as shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. But long story short, uh, the Eldar, and again, we'll... T- to, you know, go back to them a little bit, sort of slipped off into the webway. 
uh, towards the end of this after they've suffered a lot during the war. Uh, that mainly left the Crooks. Uh, to and become the Korks, everybody's problem. Everybody's problem. And they basically did not have any other major person to fight with for the most part, at least not on the same scale. So uh, they fought each other. And they did it it really good to the point where they effectively de-evolved their entire society from this hyper-advanced green-skinned species that would, you know, galaxy-tearing weapons into the retards we see today. (laughs) Like, that's unironically it. It's like, oh, you have shiny armor. I I want that shiny armor. But they're beautiful. They are beautiful, modern day, in a a hillbilly banjo sort of way. So so question then... um, if the Crocs were the predecessors to the orcs. Now, okay, now we all know about orcs. They have this cool little power, I guess you could say, if you get enough of them together and they believe something and actually... Do you think the Crocs actually had that power too, but at a grander scale, like they were Probably. aware of it? I would totally believe it. I mean, it, it's a very... It's a... Well, actually, probably not. And there's a reason for that. Um, and this goes back into basically, actually, this is a good tangent uh, for why it was called the Sea of Souls, not necessarily the war for anything else. Mm. Now, obviously, lingu- some linguistic tech, you know, semantics comes into play. So my apologies for the little side tangent. But during this time, uh, reminder in the chaos episode, we talked about how the warp is like a reflection of the material universe. Right. That being said, a lot of the species at the time, excluding the great old ones uh, and also the Eldar they created, did not have a lot of reflection in the warp. That being said, the warp is like an ocean. The tides were still. They were calm. There was nothing going on there. There was no danger in the warp at all because basically nothing was being reflected back into the warp. And whatever it was, was not super strained into being bad, being good. Uh, All the species that had access to it knew what the fuck they were doing. Great old ones, Eldar, yada, yada. So that being said, there wasn't any demons. The chaos gods did not exist. Those evil emotions were not being reflected into the warp. Which is funny because you would think that at least, at least corn would have been like made just because of the Necron and their fucking jealousy and you know. Uh, I want to towards... say this was before corn was even a thing. Well, oh, and that's what I'm saying. Like more. you would think with the countless battle that they fought and all this other shit and the hatred and jealousy they had for the Catan yep. and the old ones and all this shit, like. Would have sparked something. I mean, hell, the Eldar created gotta, uh, Slanesh from their damn debauchery. Yeah. Like, because there, there's like, uh, there's shit that says that like Nurgle didn't even technically show. Uh, there's some stuff that shows that Nurgle didn't show up until like the bubonic plague. Yeah, if I remember correct with those, uh, that something like that. Time. I want, oh, but I want to say there was like some kind of something that. I can't remember where it was from, but something uh, from like old history caused corn to come corn to come into being. <laughs> now here's <laughs> here's the big deal with that. <laughs> it's important to understand. Uh, Sixty million years ago and today, not all races, alien races, are made equal. Okay, so for example, oh, yeah. the Necron tier had almost zero reflection in the warp. Okay, just because a species arrives is sentient, can have a society culture, does not mean they have a soul by default. And the same goes for the the Tau, and we'll get more into them later. The Tau have basically no reflection in the warp. Tau's but meanwhile, no soul. the the only the only actual species who had reflections were the great old ones, and or at the very least, they knew how to use the warp. We're not sure if they specifically like reflected into the warp. No. And the Eldar, and both of those uh, races knew how to do it without fucking up. So I want to say yeah. that I want to say somewhere that they said that the I can't remember where I read it from so it may not be true but I want to say I saw somewhere that the Crocs had the connection to the warp they just didn't know about it. It entirely could have been uh, And I think that's yeah. kind of how it ended up at like <clears throat> cuz that's what it, that's kind of what it is now. They have the connection to the warp but they don't know what the fuck it is. Sort of, yeah. I was going to say, uh, back then with the Crocs, uh, to my knowledge, we don't exactly know. Now, granted, yeah. it, it would kind of make sense with the entire fact of the uh, Great Old Ones made them. They told the Eldar, maybe they told the Crocs, or maybe they kind of split it to where, like, hey, Eldar, you take care of the entire uh, psychic uh, side of things. Because, you know, Eldar are made a bit more fragile, but everything else. And the Crocs were much more like the foot soldiers. You know, break down their bodies. Yeah, break their bodies. Yeah. Uh, one thing interesting to note is that the Great Old Ones made the two species that they made, the Eldar and the Crocs. If you uh, if you want to look at something interesting, 
both of these species essentially don't really have a lifespan. I'm saying because you have Eldar that I gotta be honest, all the time that I don't know, but they've lived for like tens and tens and tens of thousands. They have the potential to live tens and tens and tens of thousands of years. Yeah. Well, they also live yeah. in the freaking webway, which yeah. is disconnected from like time itself. Isn't That's it? also part of it, which can further yeah. extend their lifespan. Yeah. Right. And speaking of our orcs, orcs are orcs have an interesting thing because they're not they're considered a fungus. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the second you that's the one problem that they have with uh, any kind of orc invasion nowadays is the fact that the second you kill an orc, all he does is release orc spores. Yeah, which and means then, that you have to go through each orc body and just burn it up so it doesn't. Oh no, out. bro! Doesn't matter. Oh really? And doesn't matter uh, with as many spores as it releases, you'll never burn it all. What if you kill them with a flamer? It, 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 it is technically possible to go and cleanse worlds of orc infestations. The problem is you it's very, very hard to do it. It's like um It's almost to the point you have yeah. to exterminate us the planet. Exactly. I yeah. mean so you know, that's always an option. Looking it's... back and, and again another side tangent onto like the Great Crusade, the orcs were on the very end verge of being entirely wiped out. I'm saying after Horus uh, won his battle at Ulanor, whenever he was crowned war master by the emperor, yeah. the orcs were considered to be maybe like a few years away from entire extinction in the galaxy. Because the Imperium, and during that time when humanity was united, they were almost winning the entire galaxy. It was very close yeah. to being over. Then they ignored us for too long. They did, yeah. Because, well, they got occupied, to be fair. <laughs> but uh, it's because they had the technology and also the willpower, the manpower, and everything else to entirely exterminate the orcs. They go to a planet, the you know the Imperium during the Great Crusade wouldn't think anything about sending. Yeah, let's send seven billion people on onto the planet. I mean, it's bring them around like the equator, have them march one direction with flamers. You know. I mean, it's essentially <laughs> yeah. a fucking green beret going in up against fucking Jim Bob with his goddamn double barrel shotgun. <laughs> How much moonshine is Jim Bob drunk? I may, I may flip my best on Shit. it. But uh. Yeah, so anyway, so Quirks devolved, and they continue to devolve to the point where they are today. And that, that that's pretty much Orc culture, uh, or how they went and evolved in the galaxy. Uh, we'll touch more on culture further on, but we're just sticking with chronological right now. Um, now we have the Eldar. Oh, are we wait, not wait, I don't like them. Which are we ones? not going to touch fully on the, uh, on the Orcs? I mean, we can. I was just trying to stick with the chronological order because we're... Trying to like set the scene up to 40k is my understanding. Unless you want it, like we can do it. That's, oh, fuck yeah. it. We can keep going. No, we fuck it. We ball. Well, you gotta think too. Fucking, if you're gonna talk about Eldar, you gotta talk about the five different like subsets yeah. of Eldar. Yeah. Yeah. And the also, only thing, uh, the only really thing else I had on orcs was talking about the uh, talking about now that they're devolved, they've devolved into fucking tribes or clans. Yeah. And go over all those. Yeah. yeah. Just go over the clan cultures, go over good old Gazgul where, where we're at now. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if we really want to go into a, we could really go, we could do an entire episode on these and we probably will. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, go fully into what happens. Um, but I figured since we'd already done the Necrons, Necrons are separated into, you know, casts, you yeah. know, here's their thing. They're undying robots with big shiny Goss weapons now. Yeah, pretty that, much. That, that's their shtick. And now they slept forever and now they woke up. They had a nice nap and now they're cranky. Oh, yeah. But, uh, the orcs are separated into tribes. I didn't write all this down because I thought I was going to remember it and surprise, I didn't. Uh, so they're separated into death skulls. Uh, you can think of these as like your uh, kind of like your your orc libertarians. Mm -hmm. um, these are your like your freebooters, your your free Buddhas. You, well, no, they're like a separate thing. These are like your looters. Your you know they're they're like your orc homeless. Gotcha. So they're, uh, they're like the opportunistic scavengers. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the uh, you have the bad moons. Uh, these are your wealthiest orcs. Uh, how are they wealthy? Because, surprisingly enough, uh, their teeth grow longer. Um, oh, yes. And their teeth yeah. grow faster. Um, orcs use teeth as currency. Yeah. I was going to say, because that's how they, yeah, because that's how they buy things, like, right now after the devil, uh, de evolution, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the, yeah, that's, that is their currency, is teeth. Not teeth, teeth. Teeth. T E E T E E F. Very, very yeah. important uh, decision. I can spell. Got them teeth. But uh, 
That's why I always say that orcs have the best, like, quite honestly, the best, most stable life in all of 40k. Because, uh, interesting story, so they're, so they use their teeth as currency, but their teeth disintegrate after a certain amount of time, Mm -hmm. so there's no inflation in the market. (laughs) <laughs> um, and their teeth constantly regrow, and everybody's got teeth, so there is no, there's no caste system. There's no upper class. There's no lower class. Do you no... think they instituted like a federal reserve, <laughs> like teeth? No, there is no. Fe- you can't federally reserve teeth because they all disintegrate, and then they just Fucking grow back into other people's mouths. Interest rates are at six percent. Our dentists just like bankers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what the interest rate is on a new orc home? The, there is plenty of orc taxation with representation. <laughs> Where the representation is coming at you for the bottom of my, my But uh, for whatever reasons, these guys in the Bad Moons, uh, they uh, they're seen as the not very they're seen as not very orky. Uh, they're they're more of the, like the range, the shooty guys. Um, mm. So they're not the they don't really like them. But you know, more Daka is always good. Uh, you have the Blood Axes. Uh, these guys are the these guys are usually like your commandos. Uh, they employ more like guerrilla tactics. These are the most uh, as orcs see them the most unorkiest orcs. Does, does that like include orc snipers? Yes. Oh shit. Too. Yes. The, these will be like your your commandos. You guys that like to stealth and ambush and orcs don't like them because stealth and stealth and tactics is not orky. Yeah. Um, you have the Goff clan, and these are these are quite possibly the orkiest orcs. Uh, these guys are usually like your bigger, you know, your bigger, stronger. These guys prefer to rush into battle. Uh, they bull rush the enemies. Hmm. Uh, you have the evil sons. Uh, these are your guys that have dedicated their lives to uh, going fast. Um, no, well, side I, tangent, I can respect that. Okay. Side tangent for them, you have. Uh, the Speed Freaks, which is a cult in orc culture. Like a religious cult or just like an uh, organization? Think cult? of the guys from Mad Ma- the Witness Me guys from Mad Max. Their entire th- <laughs> their entire that. shtick is <laughs> almost pretty much spray painting their mouths and saying witness me and going fast. Um so these guys, uh, you know, the the evil sons and the uh speed freaks, these guys have, you know, all of your vehicles, your your fast attacks, stuff like that. And then you have your uh, your snake bites, and uh, this is what's referred to as your like backwoods like redneck tribe. Uh, they don't believe in any. They don't believe in any kind of technological advancement. That, so, so they're like Amish. And, yeah, pretty much. And I use technological <laughs> advancement very, very loosely with orcs, considering you know some things are just piled up scrap metal that has a gun attached to it that you know. <laughs> Hashtag Stompa. Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit too <laughs> yeah. it's a big Stompa. That, that just works. But uh, they're, these guys are naturally like immune to poisons. Um, these guys are also the best breeders for grots and squigs. Okay, I'm glad you... Thank you for finishing that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> or that I'd be concerned for a second. <laughs> oh, God. But, oh, uh, here comes the cucumber again. Oh, oh, yeah, here Lord. comes the cucumber. Oh, <laughs> here we go. But uh, so... Yeah, that's that's mostly uh, that's mostly orc culture. Other than uh, also fun fact, um, everything from everything from the lowliest little snotling to the biggest goddamn war boss is all grown from the same fungus, and it's all self sustaining because the boys eat squigs and eat grots and eat snotlings as their meals. Oh, you love to see it. So, so it's, it's yeah. recyclable. It's yeah, great. Self-sustainable uh, society. Look at yeah. that. So is that considered cannibalism? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. If you develop I guess so, from, yeah. in the What in happens the, if you I'm branch from the same single species to like in the very sense of the word cannibalism, cannibalism, like the very definition? Yeah. However, these are orcs we're talking about, so. Mm. But if I'm a human and I eat a chimpanzee, am I am I, I mean, we're still kind of like 
I don't know. It's like same, same, but different. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I got no qualms. I would never eat a chimpanzee, but I got no qualms with somebody eating a chimpanzee because those things are freaky. Man, I would eat the shit of a chimpanzee if my life depended on it. Like, oh, yeah. if it was like apocalypse, I I'm mean, like, I oh shit, there's I, a monkey. I'm shooting and eating. I that mean, I don't know if anything could possess me to eat the shit out of a champ. Uh, <laughs> eat the shit out of a chimpanzee. Well, I usually might eat, eat the a chimpanzee, chimpanzee itself, but not the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have to keep you but, off of zoos. Oh, but yeah. So that's what I. Uh, that's what I had about orcs. We can monkeys. move on. You know, I, what, I, you know about like grots and snarlings. They're small. They're tiny. And I, every time I see them, I just reminds me of like the little. Thing. They're also like conniving little shits, right? Uh, when you're small, you try to find ways to fight back. Uh, every time I see one of those things, you know, like the meme was like, "Oh, he's so cute." Oh God, he's got a gun. <laughs> She's so fucking cute. Oh shit! She's packing heat. Uh, that's that's what I'm thinking of every time that comes up. <laughs> oh no! I just had to interject that. <laughs> oh, that squig's so cute. Why does he have dynamite attached to him? <laughs> oh no! It's a bomb squig. <laughs> oh no! Oh god! All right, gotta piss. Nope. Okay, have fun. Oh yeah. I'll be back. Have fun with that. You're gonna get the chimpanzee, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> he's he's gonna go eat the shit <laughs> out of a chimpanzee. Oh god! <laughs> Called it. <laughs> uh, All right, so I believe that was that was the orcs. All right, I don't think Orcs, you had much baby. else to go with them. Uh, who are we going to jump oh into next? We're, we're, we're not even like two two races into this. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, technically we are. We got Necrons and we got Orcs. We touched on Eldar a tad bit just when it came to the Necron. Eldar's uh, so chunky. But, uh, yeah, we've got, we've got, what, two, three, I think, sects of the Eldar. We have the yeah. Craft World, we have the Esserani, and we have the... Inari. If we wanted to, we could really go into well, we have also Harlequins, and if we really want to, we can yeah. go into the Corsairs and also the Exodites. So we technically bump that up to five. This is true, yeah. but aren't the aren't the Harlequins? Well, not the Harlequins, but the the Exodites. Like, are they even still alive in forty K? I mean, to our knowledge, yeah. Hmm, interesting. I mean, I granted, that they're, would they're fall very under, rare, but yeah. I figured that would fall under, like, the craft worlds. It actually, no, it actually doesn't, because they're almost like what he said the, um, the I think he said that, yeah, the snake bites were, were like, they're very reluctant in technology, but in sort of like a, a more of a hippie way and less of a Amish way, where okay. it's a, uh, hey, we, we like this, you know, we like this big gun, and we have reverence for our technology and everything else. But uh, we want to be one well, with nature. Yeah, so we're they, gonna strap it on the back of a dinosaur. Yeah, they yeah. they're dinosaur riders, so I guess yeah, you have a point on that. Which is a wild concept. The Exodites and and who are the other ones? Uh, corsairs. The Corsairs. So cor yeah. Corsairs are interesting because they're like a rebel branch of the Eldar, aren't they? Ah, uh, sort of. Yeah. So usually, what happens is that whenever an Eldar gets like discontent with wherever they're at in life, whether that's Drukari, Craft World, everything else, and they want to yeah. go out on an adventure, you know. Because Drukari, you know, they're kind of fucked up. Uh, El Craft yeah. World, oh, yeah. it's super, super strict, right? Uh, we talked about how War in the Heaven, like, they had no... They could control their impacts on the warp, and then they got all debauchery, and then Slanesh happened. Mm. Uh, so Craft World, in order to prevent, like, attracting Slanesh or anything else, uh, and reflecting really, really brightly into the warp, attracting demons, stuff yeah. like that. This is why you don't have orgies, kids. Exactly, yeah. Not just the STDs. Well, actually, no, they birthed STDs, so... Yeah. But so sometimes they'll like take off in their little like ships and they'll actually just be pirates. And they're actually one of the yeah. uh, usually some of the very, very few Eldar that's willing to work with chaos in usually a loose, somewhat trading capacity. Yeah. I can see that. Because, um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, looking at because, so yeah, you have, you have the Craft World Eldar, you have the Asirani and the Inari. Mm. All right. And those are just those three. But then the craft worlds have, what, like five or six others underneath it? Oh, geez, yeah. In terms of, like, specific sub-factions and, like, yeah. specific craft worlds, yeah. So uh, let, let, let's, like, fully dive into that real quick now that Grit's back. All right, are you fun? Oh, God, why is, why is there brown in your mouth? You okay? <laughs> I ate the shit out of that <laughs> oh, chimpanzee. Oh, God. I thought you hit the you chimpanzee know, before he came over. <laughs> no. No, that's supposed to go back to the zoo, like, Monday. It was on loan. Actually, oh shit, no, Monday's uh, New Year's, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, I've got him until Tuesday. Yeah, so till Tuesday. All right, well, 
I hope I get my deposit back for that. Well, yeah. spe- speaking of chimps and monkeys, the Eldar view humans as inferior, often using the word monkey, because GW doesn't want to use the word monkey as an insult in their books. Yeah. <laughs> monkey. Monkey. And yeah, depending on the audiobook, whoever's narrating it, sometimes it's monkey, other times it's monkey. He's like, eh. <laughs> you know, monkey sounds better. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so after, long story short, uh, quirks were de-evolving, necrons were in stasis, slumbering, and the Eldar sort of poked their heads out of the webway and said, wow, I guess we're the last one standing. And uh, they had a very big and fruitful empire and eventually got to the point to where relatively recently around like like M20, like M26, M20, yeah, it was like M24, M26, hmm. uh, they started devolving after millions and millions of years of this empire being very steady, very steadfast. They slowly caved into debauchery because they had a perfect life, right? You can live for tens of thousands of years or <clears throat> however long, and their entire society, they had their own, like, robots doing stuff for them. They did not have to work. You were born into elder society. You made it. You didn't never had to work a day in your life. Yeah. You could do whatever the fuck you wanted. And similar to how we talked about in the Slanesh episode, when all you have in your hands is free time, mm-hmm. then all you seek after is pleasure. Yeah, yeah. And you emanate. When all you have in your hands is free time, you end up with dicks in your hands. (laughs) I think my Christian grandma said that before. (laughs) But anyways. Idle hands are the devil's plaything. Very true. Yeah, well, Eldar Eldar took that to a whole other level. Mm -hmm. But long story short, uh, Eldar civilization was like a standard alien civilization. It was on planets, everything else. But a a few people were sort of like, the end times are coming. We're being too debaucherous. It's going to have bad effects. And yeah. briefly before the Empire fell, they basically actually went basically Amish and got on these giant, almost planet-sized craft worlds, uh, which is basically like a floating ecosystem and mini world. Yeah. Uh, and they just fucked off. And they said, okay, you guys have fun with your debauchery. And then, of course, the debauchery continued. And Slanesh basically popped up and uh, ass-raped everything in existence for the Eldar. So that being said, uh, the few who survived... The ass raping then continued to be debaucherous, uh, formed the Drukari. Those who left in the craft world were from the craft world Eldar. And we'll get into the others as they come along, but those are the two big ones. Uh, craft world, yeah. they are strict. Like, yeah. you, know, you know the reputation that like Catholic private schools have or like any other oh, yeah. sort of similar yeah. thing? That, that would be them way out of line. I mean, I'm saying when they're strict, they are strict. strict. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because from the moment you're born in a craft world as an Eldar, you have to mentally and psychically hone yourself. And if you can't control that, you're putting the entire craft world at risk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, <laughs> like, the value of the souls, all of chaos values Eldar souls, especially Slanesh, way above human souls because their souls yeah. are tastier and brighter than any other souls. Well, in the I mean, hell, if your soul is strong enough to create a new god... Yeah, 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 that'll do it. You, yeah. You're probably a good snack. Well, I mean, you, you got to think they were also having like a species wide, like elf craft world planet orgies. Well, and that's the thing craft world came back to the home planet. They're like, what the fuck happened? What the hell are you guys doing? Hey, get your dick out of his ear, please, and <laughs> listen to me, please. And yeah, I mean, yeah, think about it. Let's say you, okay, for instance, you're in the freaking military, <laughs> you leave for basic training. All right, you're gone for, let's say, freaking 19 and a half weeks. You're gone for, like, several months. And you just get to come home for, like, a day or two. Just, you know, see her before you go back out to your unit. You come home and your entire family, your immediate family, your your extended family, everybody's just in the living room just getting it on, just mm-hmm. butt-fucking each other into infinity <laughs> and shit. Join in. And you're just dominance. like, what the fuck happened? I was gone for, like... Three months, like uh, Uncle Jerry, <laughs> Grandpa, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can you imagine? You're like, oh, oh no, I got, I'm, I'm gone, I'm out of here. <laughs> Fuck this shit. You guys just do you. <laughs> I, 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 I ain't seen you walk you in like, man, thank, oh man, thanks for the mayonnaise in the fridge. Why do you guys have so much? <laughs> and you're like, you're like dipping chips in, and you're like, oh god, no, no, <laughs> like, no this no. isn't sour cream. Oh no, <laughs> I knew it was kind of salty. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, speaking of mayonnaise, you guys ever seen the man? You guys ever seen the mayonnaise scene from Neon Genesis? Oh no, no, <laughs> no, no! I've never watched Neon Genesis. Oh, so you need to watch Neon. If you want to mind fuck, watch Neon Genesis. Which one? 
all 23 episodes. They're not, plus, it's not bad, but it's... Uh, are, you, are you talking about... Because there's Neon Genesis, and then there's Evangelion, and then there's, like, another one. I can't remember what it is. It's all on Netflix right Look now. here. Shinji didn't die for our sins for you to call it Evangelion, you fucking, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking casual. Oh, it's, oh. Avon- it's Evangelion. <laughs> Oh my god! Did you really just go fancy on me? With yeah, I, I, oh my I goodness, the, bro! He's I did the, the one who's doing the. He's the one who. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, that word third. is derived <laughs> from fucking evangelical, like you know, Joel <laughs> Olstein and shit. Actually, thorough, uh, according to the lore. Yeah. <laughs> according to lore. Hey, that, hey, this my stick. Yeah. Cut it off. Stop Ex- it. Excuse me, sir, but I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse Listen. me, sir, but I have an Osaka. I have an Osaka fucking uh, waifu pillow, though. Uh, but yeah, presented without uh, context for corn, the final impacts is basically what happened for the Eldar. Just it, it wasn't what happened in Evangelion. If you've ever seen that, without <laughs> the creepy fucking giant. Yeah, without the tang, face. without the tang or gay angels or <laughs> the the mom weird. But anyways, listen, the last anime we don't that have time I watched, to get into that. The last <laughs> anime I watched was freaking the remastered Ghost in the Shell. Okay, and I was Solid. like, oh my god, that was so good. But yeah, I don't I don't get to sit down and watch. But yeah, anime. just like anime, uh, the Eldar slowly fell into corruption and degeneracy, and <laughs> yeah, they <were> just slowly, <laughs> yeah. slowly fell. It you was are. already there. <laughs> yeah, they were they like bought, one they upskirt the away Yagingo from, Hades, and they walked around campus with them. Yeah, yeah. I, I had the misfortune of seeing that one time. It was it was not good. Um, but anyways, <laughs> they're, they're one senpai away from just total annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, but uh, things have gotten too weeby for him. We haven't even reached how. <laughs> Welcome yet. to the Service Lodge podcast covering all your favorite anime. Oh, next, <laughs> SpongeBob. But, <laughs> oh, Lord. But anyways, uh, but actually, if you look at a lot of the, uh, their units and stuff like that, like the uh, the Guardians, uh, which I believe is like the, the more robot guys in Elder. I'm not too familiar with their roster. Too no, the Guardians, if I'm not mistaken, I think their really Guardians the, are just their like standard troops? basic u- troop unit. Yeah. You know why uh, they're called Guardians? Because they used to be the police force in the craft worlds. That makes before sense. Before the fall. If you look at them yeah. on the tabletop, they look like they'd be like the Arbitas of the fucking exactly. yeah. Eldar. Mm-hmm. I so, think what you're talking about are like the Wraith Guard and the Wraith Bones. Yeah, and that's shit. that's right, yeah. Yeah, or Wraith Blades, whatever the fuck they're Yeah, those are. aren't robots. Those are like, I don't they're know. They're people. Like, no, they're, they're, yeah. they actually are robots. They're like, but they're like, just like but the they're Wraith not Knights. though. They're like, they're more, they're more so, e- Evangelion robots <laughs> as compared to Mecha robots. So, so essentially yeah. what happens is, it's is like a soul when, when it's died yeah, of, yeah, so when an Eldar dies, it's like a reverse Necron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so when much. an Eldar dies, like he was saying, their souls are fucking like chum for the Eldar, for the Dark yeah, Gods. Wait, wait, which for context, I'm sorry, you, sorry for, sorry for interrupting. No, yeah. uh, when after the basically, uh, orgy birth of slanesh everything else ever since then any eldar who has died their soul does not pasco does not collect 200 it goes straight to slanesh just immediate your yeah. soul's already consigned yeah so yeah. to combat this uh we're a lot of like the the elder eldar <laughs> like the the far seers and stuff like that they have these uh like gemstones and the moment an eldar dies oh their soul is collected into that gemstone before it can go into the warp and shit. And that's what they use to put into their, like, wraith knights and wraith guard and wraith bones and shit. Um, and basically the soul is transferred into that robot, kind of like with a dreadnought, how they do with dreadnoughts and stuff. Yeah. Um, so if you were to kill a wraith guard, wraith bone, whatever, or wraith guard, wraith blade... Yeah, destroy Wraith bone, that gem. Wraith bone is what they're made out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't keep saying Wraith bone for whatever reason, but yeah. So if you destroy that Wraith gem, that fucking uh, soul just immediately goes out and then it gets sucked into Slanesh. Hence, like one of my favorite scenes in the Horus Heresy book, Angel Exterminatus. <laughs> when the Empress children visit the crone world and they start cracking those babies open like they're heroin. Yeah. Was that Angel Exterminos? Because that's it, what I, happened in Fulgrim, too. It, oh, yeah. Uh, what, yeah. Did it? With, yeah. with the Eldar Soul Stones? Or yeah. Um, yeah. When, it might uh, have, but I forgot it. Ulthway. Ulthway called for uh, Fulgrim yes. to go meet him up over there, and then he saw the sword. He's like, holy shit. No, this guy's already fucking... No, no, no. Fuck this. Start shooting him. And they killed the giant, like, old, ancient fucking Wraith oh, Guard that right, was with yeah. him. And they're like, oh, shit. They destroyed his soul. And immediately, like, his soul's just fucking gone. Yep. And this is, uh, mm-hmm. and that's when, he, like, he booked it. 
uh, Oathway booked it and then came back with the Avatar of Cain. <laughs> and fucking Fulgrim just went ham on that fucking thing. Yeah, you ever seen like the... I, I don't even know what yeah, movie but if you, from. Yeah, but see, when you get yeah, to Angel like, Exterminatus, like that happens, but <laughs> like... With ex- Angel Exterminatus, they literally start like they they get these fucking things and start fucking cracking them open and fucking sucking the soul out of them. So, Angel Exterminatus so, can be summarized as Iron Warriors like family vacation with their crackhead cousins. So, yeah. so it's like a bunch of kids at an Easter egg hunt who are just cracking these. Oh, fucking dude, things. it was because they'd get it, they'd fucking pop it open and they'd get like super powerful and like super mm. like heightened and everything. They'd be or, like, "Oh, this is fucking great!" Or like one of my favorite tidbits of Lord fucking Grey Knights cracking open Sisters of Battle and just, I need your yes. blood real quick. Just, all right, I'm super sanctified now. <laughs> it's like. Like, bro, you know demons' names. Why the fuck do you need to that, eat? That's my hot take. I love that lore bit because it's so stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it's great. Yeah, but whenever they have the soul gems, obviously they put it into Wraithbone, which, by the way, yeah. a lot of their cities are made of Wraithbone. The craft worlds are yeah. made of Wraithbone. That's like their universal concrete, basically. Everything is yeah, made the, of that's Wraithbone. That's their rock creek. Exactly. <laughs> um, but if they don't want to put them inside a uh, any of these... Uh, basically robots or anything else, they have something on board the craft worlds called a infinity circuit. And basically it's like a Valhalla heaven type deal hmm. uh, where basically they plug into soul stones and they can live on in the infinity circuit. So until it's time for them to, and people yeah. can come by like, Oh, Hey mom. And they, you know, communicate with their mom and she's in the infinity circuit. They Until go, Fulgrim <laughs> comes along and cracks one open and fucking say, ingests all the or, or Thanos shows up and starts fisting every one of them motherfuckers. Like, oh, I just put him on this hand, <laughs> that hand. I'll put him in his earrings. Nah, that'd be funny. It's like, yeah. I am. Can you imagine a decked out, a pimped out fucking Thanos with just nothing, <laughs> oh, but, fucking, <laughs> nothing but fucking Eldar soul stones? That would be horrifying. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's got, He's got like four or five chains with these giant ass stones on it. We got like the, like the pimped out Thanos yeah, with the yeah. chains. Yeah. Oh shit! But yeah, they have to live like super rigorous lives uh, because again, like we were just saying, the soul stones are a huge, huge prize for any uh, chaos force, and obviously the imp- like Imperials hate them too. For the most part, they they occasionally work together, but they have to be on guard twenty four seven because all it takes is one daring uh, chaos space marine leader or warband to take them by surprise, and they can come on in, snatch a bunch of soul stones, leave. And everything else. So, <laughs> super stringent. Uh, but, yeah. So, anyways, about Drukari, because I think Ooh. that's pretty much enough about, about the craft world. Eldar. This is where the actual yeah. fun comes in. Oh, goodness. So spiky. So yes. horny. Yes. Yeah, so these <laughs> guys... <laughs> it's like a BDSM layer. Fucking These guys do literally everything they can so Slanesh can't eat their fucking souls. So much debauchery, so much debauchery they make the Emperor's children look vanilla. We're talking yeah. Joe Deer And it's levels. funny because they have to keep committing debauchery just on others. That's that's one of the favorite fucking things I like about Drukari. Bro, it's they're like, pretty much the world eaters of they <laughs> are. for Slanesh. They, they are. are. They are the crap. They they are the Eldar world eaters. Yeah. I would say were the Eldar or the craft world Eldar basically took like the RPG build of like having low health, but they're a super stringent monk. Uh, the yeah. Jakari is like they're super hyped up, but also they have a health bar, but it's constantly being poisoned and they have to replenish their health bar with yeah. the suffering yeah. of others. Yeah, yeah, where Eldar are the uh, are the monks of the 40K universe, <laughs> Eldar, uh, the dark Eldar Jakari. If or the thief like, assassin freaking multi classes. If your oh, monk yeah. had like seventeen nipple rings in one nipple. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys are the experts when it comes to torture, agony, everything else. I, I when I say masters, that's a very high bar. I'm saying even when it comes to night lords, empress children, people you never ever want to be taken alive by in any situation. The worst fate is being mm-hmm. taken alive by the Craftwood Eldar. For context, you mean the Drakari? Yes, yeah, Drakari. Yeah, Craftwood yeah. Eldar. Was I don't know. Yeah. I feel they'll like if you, I put you in front of a TED talk. Dark Eldar, Drakari. It's all the <laughs> no, same. No, they're shit. treating me nicely. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, Craftwood Eldar is like uh, like a prison in like Sweden, and Craftwood Eldar is like uh, a Russian gulag. The, the yeah. worst you get with Craftwood Eldar is they sling racial slurs <laughs> at you, <laughs> and even then they have to muster up the courage to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it is psychopathic. And I do mean, like, these are people. There was one story that came out, like, uh, once they, like, during early 9th. And it was a 
It was either a craft world Eldar or it was a human. I think it was a human. And they were being tortured. And very slowly, every day, this uh, Drukari would come on in and they would go around and start like flaying them alive, slowly peeling off their fingernails, everything else. And it was agonizing, agonizing torture. And they would, like with chemicals and medical equipment, keep them alive for basically months until finally yeah. this guy thinks, I can't go on anymore. Every single day, I think I've reached my limit, and it keeps on extending further, and I'm finally done. Like, I, I'm probably going to end up dying today or tomorrow, and then I'm free. He was that desperate for death, and it would not be given to him. And then he proceeds to go, and he finally fades to black. And then he proceeds to wake up, and he looks to his left on the little slab he's on, where he can barely see the medic comes on over, and you can see that he actually adds another tally mark, and as it goes from, like, six to seven. Because even after this guy died... They brought him back and brought back his soul to torture him more. <laughs> they, they built uh, continent-sized walking ships. No joke, walking ships made out of human flesh of fucking, captives that are still alive and screaming. Fucking yeah. space pirates, man. Oh, yeah. Shit. I think one of the, the most uh, fun lore tidbits, because uh, I looked this up because I, I heard about the space sharks, and I was like, who the hell are the space sharks? Oh, yeah, so I, I, love I dipped into the little yeah. bit of... The, lore about the space sharks on this is a freaking tangent the space, space sharks, sharks are like are just fucking lies made by the imperium listen you know what freaking uh that could be true but at the same time i don't know it's canon though <laughs> space sharks are canon space Tyra sharks are just nothing uh, wrong. space sharks were just but, made so samoans could have representation but <laughs> they got damn good ones that's dude, for sure. like no bullshit no. though the space sharks are fucking crazy like awesome though if you look into their lore and shit so one of the things they did is that they, they managed to capture a dark Eldar or Drukari, um, like a captain or some shit like that, right? Fucking captured him, right? And they threw him in a fucking cell. And yeah, Drukari's all about torture. Oh, yeah, you're going to torture me? Yeah, yeah, do it. Do it. Do it I harder, get to, I get off to torture. Go yeah. On, yeah. They ignored him. The entire They threw him in there and just ignored him. They gave him a bucket. Like, here you go. This is where you shit. This is where you piss. And they fucking ignored him. For days. And the thing is, is like, there's the, the ship, everything was so fucking quiet. Like, he could hear a rat piss on cotton. Like, that's how quiet it was. And it was making him fucking crazy. And he got to the point where he filled up the bucket and they still didn't come change it. So he just started, like, had this shit piss every fucking where. Right? And it was starting to drive him fucking mad. And then he would hear the door open. Like, oh, thank God. You know, this isn't that. They came in. They, they didn't even come in. They just opened the door, blasted this motherfucker with a fire hose and shit. Right? <laughs> And then close the back door back up and walk the fuck away. Like, nothing. Like, it was so fucking quiet. He could hear... He couldn't even hear the engines roaring. He didn't know if they were moving, if they had stopped, whatever. He couldn't hear any kind of fucking heartbeat or anything outside of the door. He was just, like, alone, completely. And it was driving him fucking mad. And at one point, they grab... They're like... He's like, oh, you know, at some point, they're going to have to talk to me. This is not my wife. And that never said shit to him, Right? fucking why they were torturing him i don't know i think they were trying to interrogate him but they weren't talking to him at all and at one point he's like they're gonna have to come talk to me yeah you know they're 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 definitely gonna come in this and that at one point they opened the door and they came in he's like oh look yeah blah, blah, blah. they took him all the way to some part of the ship right and fucking they had him they had the bags over his, uh, over his head and shit took him to a regular part of the ship almost kind of like an interrogation room and he's like, oh, oh, yeah, they're going to they're gonna talk to me. Now. They're going to try to interrogate me. They're going to try to do whatever. I'm not going to tell them shit. Oh, this, this, and that. <laughs> fucking, they pull the bag over his head and fucking open up, like, the shutters and shit. And he's like, oh, man, I'm going to see the stars. It's going to be all this, this, and that. They took him to a part of the fucking universe where there was nothing. Oh, not a fucking thing. <laughs> just shit. empty blackness. And when he saw this, he fucking flipped. He went fucking ape shit and i was like i was like huh so the easiest way to fuck with a drukari is to completely ignore him and isolate him from everything everyone every kind of automotive sen- or well, auto- i mean he's still an Eldar, sense. so he's still a pompous ass so <laughs> he was he was a pompous ass but that broke <laughs> him when that shit happened i was like dude that is the fucking space sharks are nuts but i didn't think a drukari could be you know broken like that yeah yeah, yeah. You know, that, that makes a lot of sense now that you think about it. I've never heard the story before, but that makes perfect yeah. sense because imagine, imagine like the mental 
well, how hard it is to go through anything like, you know, you're thrown in like isolation, like let's say yeah. in prison, you're thrown in isolation for like a month, right? That does stuff to people. I yeah. mean, there's still stuff going on today about is that humane or anything else? Because if you're in isolation for a month or any amount of time, yeah. you lose it. Right? Oh, yeah. That's, Especially that with means, that sensory deprivation that oh, he was yeah. going well, through. Well, yeah, because uh, they have something like that that's like one of those like super like sound dampened rooms where they said you can like you can hear your blood pumping through your veins yeah, and shit. Yeah. and they said that i think like the longest part uh, the longest that someone lasted in there was like 43 minutes yeah it was like 43 minutes or 43 so something like that some crazy shit like yeah, yeah it, i know it, exactly under, i think it's in like under an hour and they said uh, they say like to the point of where like you experience like auditory hallucinate you experience hallucinations yeah. inside like you can uh, like you start thinking you're hearing voices and you start going like mentally insane yeah, in this room I, that's somewhere in europe or some shit i know yeah, exactly what you're talking about there's ones something. in the us i know because i've looked at those i really badly want to try one of those <laughs> oh yeah but yeah so to, for, like you were saying with the Dark Eldar, they're fucking masters of torture and doing this, this and that. And like, imagine depriving someone who's like, that's his whole fucking life is just getting pleasure from hearing screaming and torture, this and that. And, and to just remove him, not only from all that, but from all kind of like sense, just sensory deprivation. Just, yep. you can't hear shit. You can't see shit. You can't feel shit because you're strapped to a fucking chair. You got to that, and just completely devoid of all kind of sensory interaction. Like that is fucking insane. Oh yeah. And for a dark Eldar, that's gotta be fucking torture. Going for the highest of highest to lowest of lows. That's insane. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, these, these guys are so good at torture. Like, I mean, even yeah. actually, one of the coolest stories. Let's run the topic of dark Eldar. And we're sort of uh, doing this is. We all know Fabius Pyle, right? Oh, hey, yeah. It, Fabulous Bill. Fabulous Bill, the Frankenstein of 40K, <laughs> right? With all his abominations, everything else. Also, we're now torture, by the way. I mean, he wears a cloak of human skin. Yeah. Uh, but as he's, you do. As you do. He <laughs> is the only human, at least that we know of, but basically the only human or space for anything else that has ever actually been taught by the Dark Eldar. I he literally that. went to Kamara and learned. And eventually, because the Dark Eldar were kind of getting their shits, you know, kicks off and like, man, this human's pretty interesting. Why the fuck is he coming to us asking us to learn? Why don't we just torture him? And then somebody said, why don't we have a better idea? Why don't we, like, let him learn and let him think he's learning and we'll, like, you know, get our shit off to him thinking that we're actually engaging. And right when he's learned everything, as soon as he uncovers what he wants to uncover, we just fucking kill him. That would be funny as fuck. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I can respect that. That's, that's kind of funny. That is pretty funny. Yeah, and then actually Fabulous Bill sort of like saw that coming a mile away. He's like, yeah, no. So he was like 99% of the way through his glasses. He dipped out. So he's like, no, I got <laughs> he dipped out glasses on, up. By. <laughs> he did that on the final exam day. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> the final, final exam day was him being flayed alive for a million years. Yeah. Can't, can't, he can't kill me for fucking getting 100% if I only get to 99. Exactly. <laughs> I, need, I need like a hoodie that says like uh, Kamara dropout in 42. <laughs> <laughs> like in a Letterman jacket. I studied at Kamarad and all I got was this stupid t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. You gotta make the human uh, you gotta make the t-shirt look like human skin put together though. We, if we get a merch shop, we're doing that. Anyways. Oh god, yeah. But uh, yes. How they usually how they usually go about it. Obviously that's their society. Uh where the craft world Eldar mainly say to themselves, everything else. The Drukari are infamous for raiding other civilizations, mainly humans. For slaves and captives, they do. Yeah. You know, they are very aggro. If they can, sen they sense blood in the water. They go after it to capture people to bring back as slaves. Yeah, uh, yeah. Their, their whole their whole yeah. organization is just made up of cabals, which are essentially uh, mafioso. Yeah, yeah, sadists, slavers, torturers, murderers, thieves. Like the worst of the worst in society is essentially part of like the cabal of a bunch of different cabals and shit. Yeah. Which people, one last one last story about Drakari. They got so many, but also it's a fascinating yeah. fact. It's so unique. Yeah. Um, the current like, I forget the official title, but the main guy in Kamara, right, is by the name of uh, Vect. Okay? Hasdrubal Vect. Yeah, Hasdrubal yes. Vect. Yes. And one of the best stories about him is that he was on the top for a while, right, and everybody was nipping at his heels, and his authority was starting to slip. So what he did is he, uh, when somebody sent an assassin after him, which is pretty common in Kamara, 
Uh, it's pretty he, common in 40k in general. That is true. <laughs> yeah. But especially in Camaral, except the assassin might have like a dildo on top of a gun. Um, he went around and pretended to let everybody, uh, pretended to let everybody think he died. Okay. And they actually staged his funeral. And when all the houses of the people who conspired together to kill him gathered for his, basically his funeral, more to like uh, visually confirm that he he died, died. Like there was no way he's coming back because, you know, they can bring you back from like a single cell. Like there was a single cell if you left, <laughs> you're coming back, baby. Yeah. Like that's their technological power. They went over there and Vect actually survived and ended up blowing up the entire like section of Comoral they were in to make sure they were fucking dead and killed all his <laughs> opponents. Yeah. Like again, they're, they're super pirate mafia. Yeah. Cartel dude, type shit. Uh, yeah. Definitely. They, they, they make sure that one. gang warfare is, is fucking just rife throughout Kamara yeah. and shit. That's how, that's how you get to be big men. It's like, Oh, you're part of a rival clan. Okay. Uh, we need to kill you, but they incentivize more assassinations through like careful, uh, like planning and not like just subtlety, not outright. I mean, outright, you know, gets yeah. the job. Done everybody shit, smiles but. and everybody carries a dagger. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite story is still the fucking, still the one between the Tau and the, uh, <laughs> the Tau and the Drakari. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it shows the I'm naivety of the Tau. This. By mm-hmm. the way, I will say, my lore correction, I was a tiny bit wrong when I initially said that. So what it was, and this is actually funnier, the actual uh, correct version, so to say. So here's my correction right now. Uh, of course, Drakari met Tau, and they basically did the same cultural exchange, except it wasn't diplomats, it was actually warriors. So they let gate some of their, like, Cavalier warriors, the uh, Tau said, "Hey, here you go, have fun with them for a little bit." They took their <laughs> Dude, please yeah. don't. And they took like three hundred yeah. like fire warriors back to Kamara. When the next time they came back, they did say, "Hey, here's the fire warriors," but they turned them into abomination mutants that were still <laughs> screaming and writhing, and they, <coughs> they then um, used those same abominations to take over. <coughs> God, take over the Tau planet that gave them the Tau warriors, and then take all their <laughs> slaves resources. Yeah. So, right, well, that's it for freaking Drew Kari. Now, now we, we get, get to go on to Stebra's favorite uh, sect. Votan? <laughs> no, uh, no, I was talking about <laughs> sect of Eldar. <laughs> Trauma. He, he gets oh, to God. talk about he gets to talk about wonderful. Well, at least it's not at least it's not ninth edition. So you Matt, don't have to Matt, worry about Matt, that. if you're listening to this, fuck you. Anyways, <laughs> you don't have to worry about Harlequin bullshit anymore. Okay, so okay, let me Fucking, listen here. Listen here, mother. Okay. We we are so far into Eldar, but Eldar just never stops coming, okay? Every other God. race is like, yeah. here's your race, here's your sub-factions. Eldar has like 20 layers of bullshit. And the biggest like icing on the cake with a strawberry right there, <laughs> and probably like laced with cyanide, is the fucking Harlequin. You want to know? No, if you want to talk about a secret society in 40k, is the goddamn Harlequins. I'm not joking. Every single thing from... I knew there was going to be in, a in, no, Every there. single thing. Every single thing. <laughs> Every single goddamn thing in the 40k lore was set up by the Harlequins. I'm not fucking joking. I swear to God, I will pull up the fucking lore well, resources. They're the ones who basically made sure that you start resurrected. Happening. You have to get your sensory <laughs> mat. They, <laughs> they deserve the emphasis. <laughs> if you want to know who basically went ahead and got Gilman back and resurrected, it's the Harlequins. You want to know who was most influential in terms of getting him back to you Terra? Get, the Harlequins. You, you get know. one. Fa- hold on. You get one faction that you get to. You get unbridled taps on. It's either Harlequins. Gonna be, hold on. Done. It's either going to be Harlequins or it's going to be Iron Warriors. You get to choose. Mm. Oh, mm. you can't make me choose that. Yes, you oh. either get, you either get unbridled taps on the Harlequins or you get. I gotta unbridled be honest. Taps I gotta be honest. The- I'm going to go Harlequins because, I, as a proper person, there should. Little little side tangent. I know it's been a million tangents, but here's a million to one. As an Imperial Fist player, I don't like Iron Warriors, but I respect them because they are good opponents. You really have to because, respect what they've done. Really because your little tangent in the Discord says otherwise. Oh, the copy pasta with Iron Warriors? Yes, the copy pasta with <laughs> Iron Warriors. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that's pinned for everybody so, who ever enters the Discord. <laughs> so, Step Bro, let me ask you a question. Yes. How do you feel knowing Oh, that, that means I need to find the... a Magnus copy pasta yeah. now. <laughs> so, how, how do you feel knowing that the Harlequins are the keepers of the Black Library? 
I hate them with a goddamn passion. It's like the world's worst <laughs> library. You ever seen it? Like the little library scene where you got like the little Pennywise is going, hey, with a little balloon on top. I swear to God, that's what the Harlequins are in the all capacities. You could be like the best, like well-intentioned person lining up entirely with Harlequin goals and they would still find a way to fuck you over. Even if they didn't entirely mean to, their mere existence just goes against all order and sense and they just say, fuck you. And you know what? That's their faction. But fuck them. So <laughs> I love Harlequin models so much. They're so the Harlequins are funny as shit, man. Speaking of which, it, not to generalize too much, but I will say a funny little fact is I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Okay, I'm not. I'm not trying to be weird about this. But anytime I've seen a woman play 40k, like 80 percent of the time is Harlequins. I don't. What's up with that? I don't understand this. Beautiful is it like models, the Harlequin bro. allure? I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe it's the, I don't know. I don't know. And then why is the Harlequins themselves as a faction, not only are they absolute bitches in the lore and they're bitches in every other thing, they're bitches when it comes to any other lore that happens to mention them. They're bitches when it comes to their actions. On top of that, you got to go and fucking paint them. Anyone do goddamn fishnets? Hmm? Because of the diamond pattern. Yeah, the diamond pattern. Yeah. Uh, you know, what I see them. You know what I think of? I think of Patrick Starr and fishnets from SpongeBob. <laughs> That's what I fucking think of. Anytime I fucking see that shit. It's like the Joker went to a pride parade. I'm sorry. I'm just not happy with this shit. You go around in ninth edition for context. They're they're thank God. DW did one amazing thing in tenth. They aren't their own arm anymore. They're fucking like not even a detachment in Eldar, like Craft World Eldar. Okay, but in ninth edition and also eighth edition, it's like you play against Harlequins. That is the most goddamn frustrating shit you have ever played against, for the <laughs> love of God. Because you'll go around, they have like three models, okay? Like maybe, it, like they have more character units or, uh, yeah, more character HQ units than they do actual fucking troop line models or anything else. And even then, most of their models are just like variations on themselves. You look at Astro Militarum, you gotta have like the Lehman Rush Punisher, Lehman Rush Avenge, you know, whatever the fuck like that shit. You go to Harlequins, you got more variations of Lehman Rush than you got entire models of the Harlequin fucking army that they've ever supported. They got entire goddamn codex, but the Imperial Fist didn't. But anyways... <laughs> You do this shit, but then you go and fire at them, and they have a permanent invuln on. It's like you're facing goddamn custodians. If they have like a foot long movement, they can ignore terrain, and they'll say "fuck you." Oh, guess what? Your birthday's in February. You go pull down your pants and let me go ahead and shove it up your ass. That type of shit. Oh, what's that? Your name starts with a fucking D. Well, guess what? I get ten extra CP because go fuck yourself. That's why he's still going on the. Yeah, day. I know because Harlequins. I'm gonna break the mic. Harlequins fucking deserve it. That's why. So do you want to go into the actual lore? No, I want to go into trauma therapy for the shit I had to endure. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> anyways, I might lore. need to take a I'll, break. From okay, this no, I, I, I got it on my topic. System. I got it. I got it out of my system. Anyways, you didn't even do a whole lot of taps there. That, I'm, no, I'm I didn't. Impressed. It, it, the t <laughs> it was verbal taps coming through my voice. I wanted to like verbally punch them across the face. They're so goddamn annoying. Like the main ninth Lord Tib, it was them just literally showing up saying tee -hee, and fucking like vacuuming a regiment of guardsmen to the void for no fucking reason whatsoever. <laughs> it would be funny. <laughs> That's it. That is it. There was no lore consistency. They either do absolutely fucking nothing. Bro, and they're just randomly murdering people like Jukari, or they I, just have the most lore significance you've ever seen in your life. I love it when I don't hear, I don't hear I, mean, any, I don't want to hear any Eldar player say, GW doesn't love us. GW doesn't do this. GW doesn't do that. Okay, yeah, that's a complete Harlequin. fucking lie, because if you play 10th edition, GW loves the fuck out of fucking Eldar. They do. Yes, they do. But also, like, in lore, people are like, why don't GW ever give love to the Xenos? Bitch, have you looked at Harlequins? A single Harlequin model has more lore importance than the entirety of the goddamn Horus Heresy in 40k. I'm sorry, that's how I it mean, is. this is true, because, yes. uh, what was it, uh, was it, it was the Harlequins who went into, was it the, was it Black Fortress or whatever, in there, fucking, to go help out, I think it was like, there were Grey Knights, and they were, like, Sisters of Battle, or whatever, and they are getting fucking overrun, and then all of a sudden, the fucking Harlequins just pop out of goddamn nowhere, it's like, hey, follow us, we can get you out, and yep. then fucking... Yep. Plot armored the shit out of that whole uh And then they fucking, the hee 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 fucking dance their way. Yeah. Fuck yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do interpretive dance. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, that's their entire fighting style is an but, interpretive um, dance with a gun. Go, going into Lord. Holy it's, it's, shit, they really are Patrick Starr when he's in the fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are, yeah. They're doing the interpretive dance. They are, yeah. 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 Now, here's the lore for that is not only was like uh when Gilman was trying to make the way back to Terra, they were captured by... They were captured by Magnus and held on the fucking totally not Death Star, whatever the fuck, psychic bullshit. And they were in cages because, Lord forbid, a evil character kill a main character. Uh, well, yeah. And at that point, 
I, I want to say it was like Cypher initially came and they tried to like break him out. You know who wouldn't have been in a cage? Shut the fuck up. Russ. <laughs> Russ is technically in a cage right now. Tell no, me where in the warp he is. No, right, Russ is doing his own thing right now. You Russ is up. in the warp right now. He's probably gotten fisted by a couple of demons. Nah, he's probably fisted a couple of demons. Yeah, I, I, you know yeah, what? I wouldn't doubt that, too. I'm just Especially saying. Sure. It's I'm just, just a mutual Daddy, fisting. I, I'm just saying when Daddy Russ comes back, it's going to be a magnificent model. Yeah, he's going to be a he's gonna be a fucking grizzled da- fucking Daddy champ. Russ is probably the middle guy in a human centipede. Let's so. be honest. He'll probably. <laughs> be the last person that fucking comes. Anyways, they Gilliman and Co. and Gilliman and his like D and D party of like mishmash of characters were trapped in like Magnus's dungeon <clears throat> in Psychic Fortress number twelve. And then Just, I, I believe it was Cipher came and tried to break him out. And they're like fiddling with the lock or whatever the fuck. And then uh, the guards came like, "Hey, stop that!" They like chasing yeah. down the hallways. And then like out of the corner of like the fucking jail cell door, you see a Harlequin go tee and then just all along, <laughs> along, amongst the door. <laughs> the Harlequins of the forty k Michael Jacksons. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like, oh wait, you thought like Cipher, one of the biggest like potentially lore important characters, was gonna fucking do yeah. something? Nah, bitch, it's the Harlequins. <laughs> Evidently not. Oh, oh, and that is that when the uh, the fallen. Showed up out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah that was that, yeah. Because no matter where Cypher goes, apparently there's a squad of Fallen. Yeah, just whatever fucking fuck, which still has not been him. explained with, with Lion coming back. But anyways, but, um, and uh, I was going to go on a tangent about Cypher. We can't do that. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah Wait so, till the Dark Angels episode. Yeah. yeah we'll yeah, save it. Don't worry. I got plenty to say on that. But that being said, whenever it came to the Harlequins, okay, Harlequins are different from Craft World and like any other faction for the most part. Because they're actually embedded in all of Eldar society, whether it's craft world, Drukari, anything else. If you're in the craft world, you could be walking past somebody and they're in a Harlequin. You could be Drukari, you'd be walking back, uh, basically a slave, and turns out that person's secretly Harlequin. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it could have been a Kamara noble. You don't know. But the important thing is a cult. Now, whenever the um, the ass raping of the Eldar happened, uh, big things happened to their gods. Long story short, all their gods basically died. Cain was split into various shards, and that's where you get the Avatar of Cain. Yeah. Uh, Isha was captured by Nurgle because Nurgle came in like a fat guy in an anime concert and tried You're to You're going to be my wife. <laughs> Literally yeah. that, yeah. And then Segura is the only person who escaped, okay? Is that the clown god? That is the clown god of the Harlequins. The yes. last god. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to hear that in my sleep now. The laughing but, god. And all these, uh, all Harlequins are is that they basically go on ahead and they are followers of Segura. And they follow uh, basically a very complex line of prophecy. And also there's like one, it, it's like the book of Segura. I'm, I'm going to entirely butcher the name, so I'm not going to try, but it's like a book in the Black Library that only the Harlequins know where it's at and only have mm-hmm. access to that has like all the super secret text. This is the Library of Al- Alexandria in 40K. Yep. Okay. And also, there's one big book, uh, one big pedestal, that's like the Book of Segura. And it eventually, rumor says, it'll tell them, I believe it was how to defeat Slanesh, okay? Hmm. How to finally win over she who thirsts, as they would call him, her. So, finally, when it happened, is whenever Gilliman was awoken, the last page was revealed. And we do not know what that is. But that's the fucking said, credits. Exactly, roll credits. <laughs> it's an <Jeez>. index. <laughs> Surprise, there is no end. Yeah, yeah. But it's just it, an index for all the other pages. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> See, if you're yeah. and, and 12-inch movements and stratagems, please go to page 409. But <laughs> yeah. that being said, uh, they serve two functions in Eldar society, and they are respected and given basically a free pass to move through Eldar society by all aspects of it yeah. uh, because they serve a very important role. They're also, they are literally jesters in the fact that they perform basically the fall, uh, the rise and fall of the Eldar and potentially Mm -hmm. the rise again. Uh, And they'll actually put on full on performances for Eldar. And one one of the cool things that happens is they have a, uh, they have one person that's basically supposed to play Slanesh, okay, in these plays. And that person is considered basically a pariah. And one of the coolest stories I've ever seen and I will give them full credit for this, is there was actually having a presentation on a craft world. And they were doing this very long interpret, uh, literally interpretive dance of the rise and fall. Yeah. And apparently it was very eloquent, very beautiful, yada, yeah. yada. And I'll tell you, with yeah. with these things, uh, like these, 
one thing I did know is this play goes on for yes. a long, like this is like days long of a play. Yes. This is only beaten by the Necrons so who are going to play that are for like thousands of years. Uh, but that yeah, being they said, actually Eldar, mentioned that in the uh, in the Infinite and the Divine was the play that fucking uh, they talk about plays lasting like ten thousand years. Yeah, I think one of the funniest parts of that is you know they did like the little uh, segments of the quotes and stuff mm-hmm. at the beginning of the chapters, and one of them was like from the play, and then in the little timestamp it was like year five hundred and sixty eight of so and so's great play about the rise of the Necron or some shit like that. So yeah. So it goes on for a while, but the entire, almost all the craft world was in the craft world, and they're watching this play put on by the Harlequins. And finally, when it came time for uh, retelling the birth of Slanesh, they slowly go and, like, raise a hand out to the crowd and lift it up. And suddenly, an Eldar that had been on their craft world, and they've all known for however many hundreds or thousands of years, slowly rose out of the crowd and donned his gear to play Slanesh. Hmm. Okay. And this person had been prepping for this role for the past, his entire life. Because that's what they do. Their entire existence is dedicated to retelling the story of what happened and to play the role of the arch enemy of Slanesh. Now that's the, I guess you say the domestic side of things, the foreign affairs side of things is they fuck shit up. <laughs> like, again, reminder, they just, they're like... Teehee, and they void an entire regiment of guardsmen into the cold deep space because Teehee funny. So technically they're following prophecy <laughs> or some shit like that, but usually it's just... Yeah. <laughs> uh, like all of Eldar, mainly Craftworld and uh, I guess Harlequins. All the fun you're going to have yeah. in editing, making a fucking Eldar. Oh, God, don't remind me. <laughs> making a, <laughs> you thought you hated Harlequins oh, before. Shit. Wait until you have to make one turn into Michael Jackson and help moonwalk <laughs> around like, the screen. Clowns, clowns, too many uh, clowns. This is going to be yeah, epic. Yeah. Hey, boss, I need to take off work for the week. It's a long story. I have, like, a phobia. But, yeah. That, Michael that's Jackson with a Harlequin mask. That's like oh, me. Rubute, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Rubute? Oh, man. <laughs> are you okay? This audience, this hurts me. But that's what they do. Uh, now, Craft World Eldar opens a negotiation with the Imperium. They usually negotiate with the Imperium as often as they fight the Imperium. Uh, like we we're saying, the Eldar value one one of their own species above like a planet load of somebody else. They would rather intentionally and very visibly do something that would directly destroy an imperial world if it saved like one Eldar soul, because that's how highly they value their own. Oh, I Which, can I mean, imagine. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Fair play on that. I can't fault them for that. That you know, each their own. But that also often, often causes a lot of contention. And everything else, you know, bad for diplomatic incidents. Huh. I wonder if the mics will pick up the airplane that's going overhead right now. Yeah, I was wondering about that, yeah. Oh, gosh, the Harlequins, they're airdropping. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) They got nods. Or is that the dryer? I can barely hear it. I'm not hearing it pick up my microphone, so I think we're good. I'm hearing it through the microphone. It might be be the uh, heating system. Maybe. Oh, whoops. It's possible. Anyways, no, we're not being not exterminatist, yet. folks. No, no. There's <laughs> we not. just have to take what recording space we can get. <laughs> <laughs> mm, oh, yeah, I'm working on trying to get a uh, an L-shaped desk. Oh, um, fuck yeah. Something nice. We can keep it upstairs in the in the freaking man cave and shit. L-shaped. We can have everything set up so we don't have to do this anymore. We can just sit down and immediately get to going and shit. Nice. But, yeah, so... Uh, Eldar are one of the Xeno species that the Imperium is more open to negotiate with, but yeah. negotiate's a strong word. It's sort of on the, like, if a sector governor does it, you keep it kind of, like, under the table. And usually then you got to be worried about Eldar's if shenanigans. If you're a rogue trader, you yeah. don't give a fuck. Yeah, rogue oh, trader yeah. don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, they got diplomatic shirts. immunity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Not to mention, you're also operating in such a far ex- uh, expanse that even if the Imperium found out, like you'd be gone. I could, for, be, I could yeah. be halfway across the galaxy before they even knew where I was. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Now that being said, uh, there's only been like one incident, like isolated case of a Harlequin ever, uh, not necessarily abandoning their duty, but basically going on a little side quest. Do you know who um, Ephrael Stern is? Uh-oh. So in the early days of 40K, this was one of the first ever comics they ever put out. And it was of a... Uh, 
it was of basically a sister of battle who ended up basically teaming up with the Harlequin to do various shenanigans. It was actually like really interesting because they went to Kamara, uh, they were being hunted down by Inquisitors, yada yada. Actually, the last time we saw Ephraim Stern, I hope I'm saying the first name right, was they went to the Prion Nexus, which we're actually returning to in the next uh, codex that will be coming out. We have not heard from them since. But it's actually a named Harlequin character with a sister of battle who is essentially a living saint. And when is basically all, you know, her covenant being turned into a giant flesh cube by, like, chaos. <laughs> there was a sister of battle in the Pariah Nexus videos. Huh? I mean, there was, but also they're, they're being sent there because they're more resistant to the uh, Null Zone. Oh. Yeah. So then Black Templars uh, are significantly more resistant than anybody else. If you're psychic, you enter that. Good fucking luck. You're dead. Yeah. Anyways, uh, br- let's do brief mentions of, like, Exodites and Corsairs, and then let's get the fuck out of Eldar. I've spent too much time here already. <laughs> you don't want to talk about Harlequins? No. Anymore? No, clowns. <laughs> clowns, I see clowns everywhere. Oh, God. Fishnets. Fishnets and teas. <laughs> it's, on, it's like Michael Jackson, but he was down on his luck, and oh, my goodness, he needs 20 bucks. Oh, but no. That being said, so Exodites... Obviously, uh, yet an entire galaxy spending empire. Some of the Eldar uh, decided we're going to be one with nature, and they sort of live harmoniously with nature on actual worlds. Uh, for the most part, Eldar don't live on worlds because uh, their worlds got, you know, um, ass raped. So, that being said, Exodites find kind of new worlds. They live on there. They usually have an actual, instead of having like an infinity circuit, they have like a soul, like a, a world gem that mm. they keep. And that's sort of where their souls go, and it becomes sort of like a, you know, Pandora, blue skinned alien type deal. We're like, oh, we're one with nature. Yes, yes, yes. Long story mm, short, yes. they were, they have high tech. They ride on dinosaurs. They shoot space lasers. They go from there. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool. Corsairs, if you don't like any of the above options for Eldars and you're a young noble spirit, you want to make a name for yourself and go on adventures and all this stuff, you become a Corsair. Corsairs are space pirates with less uh, Drukari tendencies. And they'll trade with whoever the fuck. They're just space pirates. Yeah, they just merchants. want to be pirates. Yeah, they've actually... Um, they space have, pirates without the nipple rings. Pretty much. Uh, some of the more daring ones have actually traded with uh, civilizations close to the Eye of Terror. Like inside, like chaos civilizations inside the Eye of Terror. Because reminder, uh, chaos is chaos, but at the same time, you still have chaos empires that are willing to trade and do everything else. And they have a form of civilization, right? So, of course, there's just show up when they want to and when they need to and they're sort of the piratey guys. And that's about it for Eldar. Anybody want to say anything else? I'm I'm done. I'm done. Hey there, guys. From all of us at the Surface Lodge Podcast, thank you so much for listening to the end of the podcast. It truly does mean the world to us. If you don't mind, and if you enjoy this content, why don't you go on ahead and follow us on Spotify, as well as subscribe, and hit the notification bell on YouTube. We'd greatly appreciate that. And in the meantime, we'll catch you guys in the next episode.